It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown, <laughs> <Brown, laughs> as always. I have the ladies with us. Hi, Wiki. It happens Good sometimes. Morning. You just come on us like that. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I'm fine. You? How is the birthday going? Uh, well, you know? Lagos but, State must know that Yeni Adikula Kuti is going to be 60. I, I beg, oh. I, when I think of the money, I, I'm thinking. Hmm. Nah, don't worry. Let me. It's not you. Let, 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 let me wait till I'm 70. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. People will show up. God will bring people to show up. Yeah. Don't worry. Go good. Uh, yeah, oh my God. Like, I, I can't. We see some of your pictures on social media. It's like you picked out what we're wearing for your 60th. Yeah. I you posted that yeah. picture. I didn't po post it to. Oh, I saw it on social media. And it's not me that posted it to. Yeah, okay, I think it's on Kutio that did. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's really, really. really yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 uh, he's a husband cheap, of the celebrity. Yeah. The, yeah. the celebrant. He's a cheap organizer. <laughs> so, we have, so we've seen the Ankara, it looks good. Have you, you picked Kampala. out the one? The, the, is it Kampala I, I, or Adire? I picked two. I, I'm Adire. Adire, um, I'm still, uh, there's still one more I want. But they can't get it for me, so. Uh, I'm going to look for it. Yeah. I don't just leave birthday okay. matter, Jari. How are you doing? How are you doing? I, I'm tired Nigeria of is stressing you, right? Ah, I entered <laughs> one traffic from Abekuta on Sunday. Four Ooh. hours, man. Oh, that express. Goodness. Four I the hours. Road. Which road? Working on that. Which road? <laughs> don't what? Hey! Well, no, but yeah, I couldn't believe it. Was it Lagos Ibadan Express? Lagos Ibadan Express. I go through there. They've, they've, they've done parts of it. Before, long, long, long before Redeem. In fact. Oh, okay. Mm. I know, I know that there's really traffic. Four hours. Eh? We, we stayed there like three hours. Then we entered another one at Ibafo. Mm. I said, oh, eh? The Ibafo one is the shorter one. But we we, we one. even tried to take a shortcut through Moe. Oh. I say, by the time it's I... It's a Nigerian I, story. Ah. Uh, one mm. of these days. I, I, tried, I felt the so sorry for you. The it was the one yes, driving. Right. Mm? The trains don't go through there yet. It's still Lagos. Somebody else no, 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 Lagos by a train. They go. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, experience. if you don't yeah. have a car mm. in the town you're going to, you will, you will not yes. have... Yes, it won't be a comfortable trip. Yeah. You know, so you, you, you take the train, okay. and for me, like, I stay in uh, Alagbuli, I will not go and enter traffic to Ibutemeta to take train. I better just kuku drive. Mm. You know, so Anyways, it's... Anyways, hi there, Maria. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Today's our week two, day two. Hmm. And today... Of our self love challenge. I, I, have you been following? I, I've been following you. Okay. <laughs> Did you see how hot so she was for today, yesterday? So for today, it I is... thought she was too skinny. Uh -huh. Continue. Continue self love. You need to eat, eat more. <laughs> Why care? Why the drama? So I'm telling you. Just give her anyway, hand. for today, what we're doing today, <laughs> what we're doing today is that move the body that you have been blessed with. So either skip, run, jump, hide and seek. Dance for da me. Go dance, anything. Just make sure today that you're moving your limbs and don't sit down and be watching TV and just be looking. Okay. Even while you're watching TV, you can do some movement. So yeah. that's what we're doing no, today. Just, just move. Oh, this yeah. Like this. Why can't I want to go make some moves for us? Move yeah. Yeah. So I'm moving like... on the show today. Yeah. <laughs> so hi, Nita Fans. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I want to share more with people. You know, because well, once you, the, people don't realize that um, once you start making extra money, mm. the ex, your, your, <laughs> your mouth in, in our local lingua, your mouth would expand. Once you start, once you start earning extra, your expenses would increase. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot for you. And, I, and my appeal is that there's a bit of business is going, coming back and people are having a bit more cash flow. Can you remember how you suffered <laughs> last year when there was no business and continue to shrink yourself so that you can invest a bit more? Because, Mario, I've just been wanting to buy shoes. I've, I've been wanting to buy shoes. And I'm like, talk about you have shoes. Then I went online and my car did not go. I, the next day I said, thank you, Jesus, that my car <laughs> didn't go. You? <laughs> my car just helped Because you see, you just feel like buying because you make, you have a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Is it that color of shoe will not be, you don't have a green shoe. How can you not have green, green shoes? Exactly. Eh, so <laughs> the, what, you have survived ten years without green shoes. Suddenly <laughs> you, are, you want to buy. So control you yourself. That happened to me yesterday. You just be. Well, I was going somewhere and I needed a pair of green shoes. Mm. But I have green shoes. I just bought. I just wore anything. I said, well, yeah, you'll be ready. Fine. Go with yellow. I wear it like that. I am not going to come and kill myself. So it is. It is a high level of discipline. Mm. Yeah. For each to say, you know what? I'm not going to buy it. I'm just going to save. Mm. So and, I, and that's why we started this year saying we're going to be investing this mm. year. Mm -hmm. Whenever is not for it's not for spending it's for investing yeah, just investing. like our country now we're collecting money from fac mm. to, to spend yeah. not to invest yeah. 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 to do party 
Why can't you? Yeah, yeah, 60, 60 comes not, once in a lifetime. Yeah. It's one of those things that we have. We're not, we're, okay, See, don't, don't that, leave Lagos. Why can't you try this 60? It doesn't matter. You, <laughs> you live in Lagos. You know, there are some Lagos <laughs> things you must do. Yeah, 60 is a big age. It's a big ah, what is that? Why can't you? Everybody will show Big age, I'm not dying of heart attack after. No, no don't worry. I'm going to finish all my money. Don't worry. Why can't you? Ah, why can't you? not you. Oh. Don't worry, God is able. Allah will start rolling me. Don't worry, Allah will come in. Come in. Amen. I, I hope I'm getting from you too. <laughs> Allah will come in. It's like this. God got you. Your creator got you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So My we're gonna go on a quick break. Yeah. Uh, okay. Look, we're gonna take a deep breath. <sighs> now right, let's go to the front page review. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the nation. Gunmen kill policemen in multiple attacks on stations. Mm -hmm. Governor's picture story here of the counter, the county, the counter actually, of a police station in Abia State was burnt. Governor's Algon protest planned deduction of $318 million. State OK autonomy for judiciary and legislature. Asu Sanu reject Mackinday's order on Lautech VC. Okay, the that's the story here. Picture story, yes, gunmen go have attacked um, two more in um, the South is so in Anambra State, um, government killed two police officers. And also in Abia State, they set the station ablaze, burnt all the cars and all vehicles that were around the um, police station. Uh, this is just another one in the many attacks that happened very recently in, south, in the South is. So one of the sources who did not want to be named because he wasn't given authority said that um, when the gunmen came in, there were over 20, this in Anambra now, and they were shooting sporadically. Um, he said they killed two of their officers, police officers, but they were also able to, I think they shot down a couple of um, the gunmen as well, but that the gunmen went leaving, took their, the, the corpses with them. Uh, yeah. In Abia State, they were trying to get into the station, but because they were unable to get into the armory, they right. were unable to, so they set everything in place. Um, uh, the vigilante is speaking in that area, right. saying that sort of they're the ones that are really able to move around because right. the police officers are being targeted. Right. Yes, yeah, yes, and right. The, um, from January 8th till date, there have been over 20 attacks hmm. on, police, on police personnel. On the southeast, on the southeast, 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 southeast oh, wow. alone, you know, mm, and right. the nation, they listed all of them. I mean, I can't list all of them mm, because of yeah. time, but there are and, like and, 20, <laughs> so many local governments, January 23rd, mm. so many. I think there was a senator from the, from the middle bill that was lamenting in the house, saying, listen, we have to do something about these things. We can't yes. continue um, letting the, 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 the country go in that state of anarchy, especially in that side of, on the, side of the country. Mm, that and was must do, Vang Vang yeah, there was Vanga that was that. But I was so going to... I want to take the story of Sanu and um, Asu. So the governor of your state had um, given a suspension order to the VC of Lautec. That's the, the vice chancellor, Professor Michael Ologunde, asking him to step aside based on some misdemeanor. Um, but right now, the ASU registered in um, Lautec, as well as the SANU, that's the Senior Association of Nigerian University staff, are all saying that this is not, this is contrary to the laid out way of asking someone to step aside. That there is a governing council for every university that has the right to sack and hire. VCs and any other principal officers that if they are found, if um, the VC is found doing something wrong, the process should be, a, a due process should be followed in asking him to step aside, not just um, the order from the governor of or your state mm. to step aside. So um, I, I like the fact that they are asking the due process be followed. Can the or your state governor follow due process in um, whatever issue he has with the VC of Lautech, right. follow the process in challenging him and sanctioning him. I was going to take a story on the um, judicial autonomy because it's also in the nation here. Mm. So Dr. Fayami, who is the governor of Ikit State, okay. led a team of governors and other stakeholders uh, from the presidency and they had a meeting yesterday where it was affirmed that the governors have absolutely no objections to the autonomy for the judiciary and the legislature. All they're waiting for right now are the modalities to be put together in the white paper where they, they agreed on what the modality of execution would be. And once that is done, uh, to implement implemented. Therefore, they're asking Josu not to stop the strike and they should um, go back to work. Yes, so they and, give um, May 1st. May, okay, yes. May 21st, I think. May 1st. May 1st. Okay, mm -hmm. I thought it was 21st. Okay, okay before we go... Um, we have to run to punch. I'm sure the story is in another paper, whatever oh, they want to take. Okay. Moving on to the punch. <laughs> Fuel subsidy rises to 500 billion naira. NNPC rules out price hike. 
NBA backs Joseon vows to force governor's compliance. Oshun hunters engage headsmen in gunfight, force invaders to flee. Lagos plans establishment of anti graft agency. Ekiti monarchs abductors demand 20 million naira anxiety groups family. Two nurses, two others killed, 10 injured in Ogun crashes. Wiki mm. converses state ownership of minerals, uh, government royalty. And um, FG admits revenues crushing, says Nigeria facing hard times. Mm. Which stories? Um, the um, hunters that repelled the, uh, this was in um, Koka village in Osho okay. State. The, the residents, the villagers said they were asleep. One said she was and just about to sleep at 11.30, she heard gunshots. They, another one said he was even asleep. The gunshots woke him up. And they sang rounding everybody up and saying, look, everybody come out. Um, but one of the villagers managed to run away and go and call the hunters. So the hunters came and started shooting at them. That's how the um, yeah. invaders took to their heels. And left and the, cap the capitals. Uh, left the, everybody. The, they didn't, uh, they, some people got injured. Well, bullet wounds, but nobody was killed mm -hmm. and kid or kidnapped. Mm. So, well, okay. I think this goes to what the minister, that minister, I, I can't remember his name, said that we should protect ourselves. Yes. Well, he didn't say carry arms. So, mm. I, this is the only way. It's yeah. If everybody well, else is. Empower the vigilantes and yeah. the local herdsmen, local um, hunters to mm. support the communities. Yeah. Wiki, yes, yes, so I'll take the Wiki story. So, Governor, Wiki mentioned the fact that. Um, Nigeria is in an economic crisis and that we are so focused our energy as a country into oil and it's hmm. not sustainable. Yep. He's saying that many states have minerals. He had this conversation with the Minister for uh, Mining and Mine and Steel and the statement was to encourage the government to allow states man their res minerals resources and pay royalties to the government to the, the federal what government. Are we that there are many that's restructuring now. That's mm. what we're talking about. What are we doing with the Ajakuta still anyway? Yeah, he, mentioned just like, he mentioned Zafara having large gold deposits and that that's been the reason behind banditry and that many states have minerals that are untapped. That if you allow the state governors to do this, there will be less complaints of funds and they would send royalties to we'll the We've been government. screaming this thing from day one. So this is the version of restructuring that we've been clamoring for because yeah. you know, they're more they have, they have, yes they have changed the restructuring several times no so. I, don't, I don't i don't i don't buy that argument because they tell us oh it depends on what you mean by restructuring mm. they are different definitions no they are not different right. definitions exactly of just very very clear <laughs> let us control our resources period mm -hmm. decentralized power period that that is not uh, de yeah. de defined anyway mm -hmm. moving on to vanguard this this matter here <laughs> Vanguard 50 billionaire fact shortfall. We declined governor's request to borrow from CBNC's federal government. Hunters fall headsman's headsman, uh, kidnap attempt in Oshun. YK took that story. Mayhem in Anambra and Abia, nine dead, zone 13 headquarters uh, attacked. Police headquarters had that. Um, PNID. FG appears before UK court as trial begins in weeks. 2023, APC, PDP, others should nominate Igbo candidate. For presidency, say Ohane say, only varsity's not external body have powers to admission. Uni, Uni Abuja fires back at jam. Okay, so the shortfall. Um, so there's still this back and forth between the federal government and um, uh, the governors. And the federal government here, from, through the finance minister, is saying that the actually that actually the governors did ask them to borrow 50 billion naira to add to what they've been giving uh, the monthly allocation because it was a, there was a shortfall. Yeah. And, they, and they were saying that they actually refused to borrow on behalf of, of the governors. And the, this goes back to what um, our Obaseki governor of Edo was saying concerning the extra billions that were printed mm -hmm. for them. And what experts have said and repeats continually say is that, yes, across the world, they have that quantitative easing where you give money, you print out money to support. But this is done specifically for reasons to help push back and jumpstart the economy, not for you to go and pay salaries, not for mm. you to go and pay and consume, and that's the problem. Because when you do that, the, of course, we have the hyper inflation. This again is where all... restructuring comes yes. in. If all all the uh, state governors have that uh -huh. financial look, make your money yourself. Yeah. Your resources are your own. Yeah. Start to make money. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it will probably just start the economy. Yeah. yeah but but uh, this, the, the minister saying that they didn't print the 50 billion is not a solution. If you did not print it now, you will still print it because this, this system you're running, you can't They're not it. even denying they not print. They just said that, listen, we printing listen. is part of what we mm. do because we use it to... So they're telling, they're telling us that it's a normal economic activity for mm. the CBN to do. However, they've not categorically told us that was what was done. Okay. But they're making us understand that it is... It is um, something that One can be done. Story, um, we have to run on a quick. When we come back, we'll continue that story. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Because they are monitoring who you reply, like, we do not reply you. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Okay, so Vanguard, you had a story. Vanguard, yes, I want to take the story of INEC. So INEC has threatened all the political parties that are carried that are getting violence during their national congress. They are called their congress that we are going to blacklist you because they don't want. Um, there sometimes the violence involves uh, their their staff that are meant to go there. Their personnel of INEC getting involved that the section 85 and 87 of the electoral act 2020, 2010 says that the level of violence in some of these congresses is making it extremely difficult for the commission to exercise statutory oversight on the congress and if you're if you're doing your congress yeah. as a party <clears throat> and it gets violent you'll be blacklisted well, yeah, INEC, let's make said, it, okay go okay. ahead so they're also saying that there are timetables and schedules of activities that must be followed mm -hmm. and so it seems that many political parties do not follow those schedules or timelines and that they have to do that. I think it's very good that the um, uh, that INEC is stating categorically mm -hmm. what it expects of political parties. And I hope it's not just paying lip service because most of the big parties are usually the ones involved in all this. That's what I was going to say, Mariam. I said, listen, activities. you don't have to go around, dance around the bushes. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor Ito saying us, name the names, APC, exactly. PDB, period. Just yes. say, I'm going to suspend both of you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the other ones can now have an opportunity. So let's not stop saying well, political parties that are, mm, we already know who they are. Name them. Mm -hmm. Nigerian Tribune. Name and shame. Yes, name and shame. This is the season, Soros. Okay. <laughs> no more dancing around the bush. Nigerian Tribune, Judiciary Legislature Autonomy. We talked about that earlier. Let's find a story we've not taken. Prompt treatment of malaria can prevent kidney disease, says experts. Picture here of um, Governor Sonwolu, um, I think during the ceremony of the new commissions that were established. Uh, we'll find that story. Two yeah. policemen critically injured. Vehicles burnt as gunmen raised Anambra Police Zona headquarters. Eight repentant militants kidnappers become pastors in Abuja. Mm. Nine Nigerians suspected to be inmates from Oweri Prison arrested in Ghana. Mm. 2023 politicians investing in VC's appointments will be a disappointed, says federal government. Okay, which story are we taking in Tribune? Yes. So experts are saying that um, malaria in children especially um, causes, uh, when not treated on time, causes kidney failure on some sort. That uh, about 30 children are taken to usage every, every year for kidney-related issues. And 15 of them usually have, about 15 out of those 30 have malaria. And really it's about how they are being treated. They're asking, of course, the usual make sure that they are net, especially during the rainy season where there are lots of mosquitoes, that, uh, because eventually affects the kidneys of children and sometimes leads to their death, especially when children have what they call the cerebral malaria. So I think it's very important because usually I think, I used to think that it was the treatment of the malaria, maybe uh, bad drugs that affected the kidney. I didn't know that malaria itself could mm. affect the kidney mm. of the um, right. Cause kidney failure okay, in children. Yes, and right. then there are nine Nigerians that have been um, apprehended in Ghana, and they are suspected to be one of the inmates that had escaped when um, in the southeast. Mm. When you know the when the prison was, yeah when the prison was attacked and over 1,884 um, inmates ran out of place. So these nine had gotten on a boat mm. and gotten to Ghana via River Volta, I think is what it's called. And they had gotten off the boat. They were about to board a bus when they got the police there got intelligence and wow. came and rounded them up. Wow. And so I think that's good news. And um, I haven't heard stories about rounding up of those inmates. In Nigeria yet. I don't know if we mm. have heard, no, you know, I've but heard that. Um, we've heard Okay, that. Governor Sanwolu has signed two bills into law, so since his resumption as governor, he signed now a total of 10 bills. The, these two bills, one is the um, 
Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission, and also a gaming law um, um, to, um, is, let me read what the law is supposed to do. Uh, the gaming and lottery laws will ensure fair play, restore proper regulation and monitoring of the sector. Also, the anti-corruption law was part of measures to ensure people's trust are not betrayed in the state as regards to issues of um, um, fraud and all that. So, right. I, I'm, I'm happy that these two the agency laws... yeah, go ahead, to Mikey. investigate um, any official accused of misappropriation misappropriating public funds. Yeah, mm. so, I mean, those are two it's good laws. To... We're happy about that. Mm. And we hope it's not, it goes beyond yeah. the, 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 the law not, and actually implementing, yeah. implementing it. Okay, let's move on now to the Daily Sun. Nigeria's existence on the threat, say senators. Country mm. under siege from murderous non-state actors. That was the senator I was talking about earlier. Mm. 2023, Southeast will produce President Vals or Hanizi. Uh, Final story. Businesses, households spend 10.5 trillion yearly on fuel mm. generator maintenance, says report. FG6 Rivers partnership in harnessing minerals and INEC threatens to backlist parties over violent congresses. Okay. Um, and, and, well, you take a part of this um, the major headline. Well, go ahead, Yeah, about the, the senators. They said there are 500 million um, illegal weapons in West Africa mm. and 350 million of those are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That is 70%. Yep. So, and that this um, thing is going to consume us. So they have to do a bill to um, to fight this. Uh, but um, Shetima and um, one other guy, what's his name, uh, Doctor Dogo Isua, are saying, mm. "Look, maybe you knew all this before. Why haven't you?" done anything to so, uh, so. Uh, implement these bills yeah. and make sure that we are fighting mm -hmm. this. That as far as they are concerned, they are paying lip service. And if anything happens, they are going to be blamed for... This is uh, a really pain. This, are, this is a really, really, like, really they difficult. They say Nigeria is dying. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I think... You see, I think, I, I, to, sum, to, to summarize also what they're also saying is that the truth is that the senators cannot sit by and watch mm -hmm. while all this is happening. Something mm -hmm. must be done. Mm -hmm. So because posterity will judge your actions and inactions mm. and we're at the state where the, the lawmakers will begin to review the laws we have and support the, the, the system via the bills and the security to ensure that we have enough to 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 combat these um insecurity issues across the country but it's a really really sad situation I, I, right I, I, you know i just think they need to know like these senators they need to know about legacy Legacy is not just having, it's not having money. Money is, does not ensure a good legacy. Mm. How many have died that we don't remember that had money? Yeah. It's not, there are many of them, Patsima, Jomi, this one, that, many of them have died with money. You don't talk about them today. today it, yeah. It's legacy, it is what you leave that mm. people will remember you by. And I, if they want to be remembered in a positive way, they need to make sure that... No, I can't. Just like you said earlier, what you need to do care. now is restructure, period. Mm. That's, in the, that's why you're in the house. You see, if a if, if senator is coming in front of people saying that you don't know what to do, how can they support? The, the answer is very clear. Very, very clear. Do your job. Do, do the bill. Be, let us begin yes. to restructure now. Mm. Let every, the police. Yes. The when the you do that, posterity will judge you and say, yes, you, you did, did your, your best. The, the Benin State government part. recovered eight AK-47 and they were able to arrest four people, including a traditional, a traditional ruler. These are people that murdered, allegedly murdered a, a, um, soldiers in a local government. This yeah, was done by the local security apparatus, the, the, the state security team, were the ones that were able to find this out. So obviously yeah. we've seen how local security apparatus, the one that happened in Osho State, it was local uh, people. But it, instead of, I, I don't support um, state, uh, uh, state policing, I don't, mm. because See those vigilantes now. Mm. Why not get them into the police? Mm. They are they, they know their area. Better. You will not get a, a, a policeman from Kano. You will take him to Abia, and you will say he, he should. He doesn't know the well, area. Well, well okay. With that, that state police thing is debatable. We can actually de de talk about it because many people believe I, that state, because the issue many people have against state policing is this issue of abuse. distrust. Yes, abuse. and you know, abuse trust of the that we use appropriately, to be used properly. Mm. So that's the issue. But we now need to tackle the issue of trust. Do we have the leaders that we really can trust that they, when you empower them with state police, they will use these power appropriately? And so so the only thing now is that not to make sure that, that is we the let those question that we can you can trust. ask. Yeah. Do we have? leaders that we can trust, that the police will not become their own tools in election, tools in Thank oppressing. You. Let me see it first. You see, mm. let us see the other option. Look, yes. See, 
the we have 350,000 policemen. Not we have in, mm. in a country of 200 million people. It it How can police be effective? It cannot work. It cannot work. Uh, this is this system. And many said. of them are cannot private work. police officers, mm -hmm. private individuals. Then take 100,000 and put them inside government. They are, they are uh, guarding yeah. president, guarding governors, guarding ministers' wives, rich people, governors' rich wives, people. rich people, <laughs> artists. They are guarding everybody mm. because that's where the money is. I don't blame them. If I were them, I would do the same thing. Mm. Mm. You don't pay them well. You, you don't equip them. You, you look at, you go into the police them. station. Yeah. Does not have paint? Not, we, are, we are talking paint, not having paint, too. not to call computer. She has said, how, how do they want to? Uh, don't you see those I things have, when I American that, police they I just do the wall like this? Right they, they have seen that area, seen that area. Seen that, ah, that's where the click. Ah, ah, come on. Well, I don't know. What has gone I past say, uh, Shaka Bula now? <laughs> I <was laughs> said, for years, many years, right? They needed my old couch to a police station and they were so excited to oh. receive it. Like, they, they, they have no <laughs> proper couch. This is about six years ago. ago. Old couch, I took it to the station oh, and they were cool. so happy to get it. You know, because you have old furniture, they need yeah. it. You know, it's that sad. We know. But why can't. Police station has got it. So the system has not really. This, is, this system also, is. So that could be blamed on how the centralization of the police. This is paper mm -hmm. review. We're making it a hot topic. Police station has got. I, I, sorry, Morayo. Has not improved since I was a child. Mm. But it has gone down. Hmm. True. We have to run, unfortunately. Ah, to we'll make, it, now, we'll make it a topic another day, YK. I think it's something worth talking about. <laughs> That's all we can take on Front Page Review. When we come back, move on to the hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the news broke uh, about the fact that five female pupils of Oreo Senior Grammar School, Igbogbo, Ikurudu area of the state, Lagos State, actually were found in a video smoking shisha while in their school uniform. And uh, the students have since been suspended. And the government, through the Office of the Special Advisor on Education, uh, Mr. Tokumba Wahab, confirmed the development and said that these girls will be sent on rehabilitation. But we'd like to hear your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on not just these five girls, but on the prevalence of drug abuse in our schools among students? And um, what you think the government can do to prevent this from occurring further. You can call us on 0812705 You can also call us on 091-390-76948. You can tweet us at TVC and please hashtag your TVC so we can read your tweet. So many of us saw that video, which went viral, five girls. I mean, they had the perfect profile. Cut the hair, you know, your school uniform, mm. their socks were there. You know, they look like they're going to school. Looking perfect, like the average Nigerian young girl. Unfortunately, these girls were found um, smoking shisha. Which shisha, for those of you that don't know, is tobacco in the bowl. So yeah. it goes through uh, some kind of a pipe. Yeah. And, they, they, and these kids use it and smoke it to get high. Um, I just thought they were not Nigerians. Like yeah, initially first, we thought, I was like, it's always no, good to say, oh, it's over there. Yeah, it's it's not, there. Not, this this can be happening like, like it's here. Yeah. Then, I don't thought it was even in Lagos. Like it was, it was double. You could do here. You, could, here. you just, you, <laughs> you know, and it just shows the level of decadence and the level of breakdown of moral standard in our society. Mm -hmm. We, the what what we feel we are doing to each other is affecting the next generation already. We, the people in school averagely don't feel encouraged or motivated. They don't see the light at the end of the tunnel in the study process, and. We haven't really created a structure that would encourage our children to walk the right path because they've seen many people walk the wrong path and succeed. So they look at why am I following the right path? This this is the way. This is this is a faster way to succeed mm. than this long winding route that might not end end up with me getting to where That's I want perfect. to go in life. So this 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 is really sad. Um, I'm happy they've been suspended because we really need to have such firm actions and deterrence against such actions taking place further. But beyond that, we need to talk to the, ch the, the teachers. They, they didn't notice anything. Um, we've heard videos, we've seen other videos where children come to school with mobile phones that are really, really expensive and they insult teachers. How are we incentivizing the system mm. to mm. deal with 
these issues um, these issues right. before it escalates to this point let me come to your initial okay. thoughts Maria. so yeah so um for me i know that teenagers will always find themselves in things like this because they are curious they want to experiment they are easily influenced by their peers you know just peer pressure and um smoking drinking you know it's glamorized in Ooh, in in yes. movies in music there are stars there are celebrities that they look up to all do this thing so you are seen as being cool so those girls that we caught even though everybody shouts oh how dare you probably their mates are looking at them like cool girls but i just want to use this opportunity to let um um younger ones just understand that um because the way they sell shisha is 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 told and sold in such a way to say it's, it is less um, dangerous to your health than cigarettes. So you're like, well, it's not like I'm doing cigarettes anyway. It's, it's not as bad or toxic to my system as cigarettes are. But they are just as bad. In fact, there are some studies that have shown that they are even four times worse than smoking cigarettes because the way it is being inhaled, you take the toxins that, you know, directly in. And secondly, it also causes um, gradual loss to your eyesight. So before you get anywhere, you start losing your eyesight, you know. So there are effects on your body from smoking things like that. And it does not make you cool. Mm. And um, it's important that you understand because like um, Toto and Mariah, so I thought, ah, this is not us. This is them. This is them, meaning this is them that, you know, they don't mm. raise their children well. This is them that they don't tell their children the right thing. This is them that their children don't understand how important it is to just face your studies and right. do what's right. So that's something we also need to tell ourselves. Uh, maybe we are too blind to the fact that the effects of the, uh, what we see on TV is affecting us to our backyard. Our children are doing these things, are experimenting with these things, but mm. it is it right. does not pay you in any way. Right. It will make you cool only for two or three minutes or just as long as you're young. And in a few years, when you're chasing your dreams and running about, then you're in hospital for the effects of things that you shouldn't have done right. in the right. first place. Right. Wanky, your thoughts on this, Anisha? Yeah, um, you know, I want, I want to say something that's a bit different to what you said. When you want to destroy a nation, you start with the children mm. by giving them drugs, by giving them things like this. So... I believe that this influx of drugs into our society is part of what is causing the terrorism, the um, banditry, because um, if you go to the projects in America where the young black children are, what happens there is they um, pump drugs into, that, into those Convenient. projects. So the children always grow up, they, are, they become a menace to society. So, I think this is part of what is happening in Nigeria now. So it is something that we actually need to um, curb as soon as possible. I love that the Lagos State government has, is rehabilitating them because that is the way to go. Not just suspend them. You need to know, okay, why are you taking it? We are, these are the steps. Mm -hmm. so if you know that you have um, children that are indulging or you know of any children that are indulging, now is the time to police okay, your let children me, let me, or your neighbors' children. Let me children. stay on you for a moment mm. on, the, on, the, on this why factor. Because that's, that's extremely important. If we don't tackle the why, we'll not know how to even start this conversation. Because there's a ripple effect. We are here, the government is debating restructuring, debating corruption, debating who's going to be president in 2023. Are, these are what our leaders are focused on. And whilst you're doing that, the, 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 the various layers of society is deteriorating. Nobody's focusing on young people. These girls are just a 0000.00% 000, 000, 000, 000 of the children that are actually engaged in drugs. Our kids are using drugs very, very prevalent in the, prevalent in the, in, in, in the schools. They are very, very sexually active. Hmm. I, was, I, was at the, I was at a conference recently where they were talking as if, oh, sex is so, is, is just bad, is this, is... And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> these people are talking to, they are probably already doing it already. Hmm. So there are ways we need to convey this message of, 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 of drug abuse. It's no more, don't do it. It's more like, listen, it's there. You must teach our children to make choices, but our leaders are not focusing on that. They are too worried about the issues of... Uh, they are debating back and forth in, 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 in the House of Assembly. And I worry that... We, we, we are the NGOs, we are the civil societies, we are yeah, the yeah. other groups of people coming out to say, listen, while you guys are doing your politicking, we are here to support these children. Majority carries the, the, the You see, the government, you see, 
It's, it's not news that the government don't, fit, don't tackle what is important. They tackle what is important to them, not what is important to the society, not what is important to the country. Mm. It is how, how my pocket is going to get rich. How, when I leave this place, I'm the government, so let's forget about government. Let us now say, okay, how are we going to solve this problem? And then take that problem to the government. Okay, you are the cause of this problem. Because while you are um, busy, Facing 2023, yeah, and all what what, and, what was that one where hijab wearing soldiers mm -hmm. and all the nonsense that they all, that mm. they keep on putting in their bills. Majoring in minor. Mm. Mm. They, they are the, the 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 fabric of their society mm. is decaying totally. Mm. Right, let me go on a break. When we come back, we're going to bring in our guests to shed more light on this mm. issue and other issues. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. staying with us so we're still trying to get our guests from naspat alaja ganiyat babalala we're having a bit of technical issues but whilst we're trying to get that connection sorted um i'd like to I have a call i'm told good morning okay. are you there akisoya thanks for calling hello hello akisoya are you there Okay, we're having connection issues. Yeah. So, yes, Maria, yeah, we're going to so, see. Yeah, so we're talking about how, you know, you had mentioned that we need to find ways to reach out to the children. Just the example you gave where we just say, oh, it's bad, stop it. But we're already talking to children who are more exposed than we used to be. Mm. And right now, many of them, the way we have brought up our children, we've brought them up to ask questions. We encourage them to ask questions in other things. So when it comes to things like drugs, sexual activity, we need to provide them the information so that they are able, able to make the right decision. So to just say to them, don't do it, stop it, usually does not work and hasn't worked for this generation, is to break it down to them. These are the effects it will have on you. Secondly, we cannot have this shisha smoking thing um, so openly done by adults. Do you understand uh -huh. how we do it God openly? Uh, it's on our TV, it's in our movies. When we go out, you, sometimes when you go out with family, there are some places you go out with family, there's a shisha smoking person just yeah. beside you. So it's mm -hmm. not even seen as a bad thing in the society. It's only seen as bad when we see young mm -hmm. girls in uniform taking it. And the truth is the government cannot always come down to... to you know, to effect that to those policies, yeah. you have to raise your children. Let me for, take this call. Uh, by yourself. Stop it. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Hello, Buki. Are you there? Uh, call. Okay, Tokwe, go ahead, please. So, um, we have a. We, there was a deal that was signed a few weeks, a few months, a few years back, that banned smoking in public spaces in Lagos. That is not allowed. Um, you can only smoke in a place that is a designated smoking area. But like I said earlier, when you asked the question, majority carries the vote. What is majority of our people doing? What has proven to be more successful for majority of our people? And um, what, why have we, as a, as a people, overlooked other children, thinking like, I'll protect, let me focus on my own children. That wasn't what worked for us back in the days. There was still moral decadence back in the days, but we had communal parenting. You know, that person that will see you and call your mom or say, let your mom know, I saw this person doing this thing. The person did not go on the way to school or will say, ah, how can this small child be doing this here? No, 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 no. You will not be allowed in this establishment. We, we had that communal watching over each other. We don't have that anymore. Two, we have social media. Have you seen mm. what is being posted online? What's, what TikTok is, what is trending on TikTok, on Instagram? We have... We, we've turned these things that used to be seen as bad into the norm. So everybody wants to look cool. Everybody wants to trend. Mm. We spoke about the silhouette challenge. Do you know how many true parents you don't know that you don't do silhouette challenge? Tukwe, mm. I don't even want us to go this far because you see, if we do I this mean, thing, we won't do another topic. Digging. If you watch dig, music videos... I don't want us to dig that far because on, on, our, our on, guest is here. I don't want us to dig that far because bad. this is a full day topic. Tukwe. Yeah. So let, let's not even go that far. Okay. Let's just stay on this shisha matter mm. and the fact that you talk to you talk about we talk to parents but there are some parents that don't have time to talk because they are chasing they, they don't want to feed that you livelihood. Oh. They, they, they are very poor so i say they don't want to talk to you but the man is working 
10 hours, 15 hours a day just to be able to tired. put food on the table. So that mm. those five girls might have poor parents. Mm. One might be a, um, a so selling tomato out there. The, the man is there might be a rocada rider trying to make life easy for her the best they can. So they don't have that guidance where they're talking to. They don't have time to talk to you. Grow mm. up. So there are various factors. Let me bring mm. in our, our guest. She's a guidance counselor. Elijah Ghaniyad Babala, thanks for joining us. Sorry, we had connection issues earlier. Are you there? Good morning, I'm here. Good, Good morning. morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Everyone in this video. Good studio. to Thank have you. Thank you very much for having me. Fantastic. So we were talking about so many factors affecting young people today. Um, we saw the five young ladies who are current, currently going under rehabilitation under the government because of the smoking of shisha. But we're also taking it beyond that, saying that aside from that, there are issues of abuse, issues of um, general moral decadence in our society with young children. How do we begin to have this conversation? How do we begin to solve the problem inside out? Thank you very much. Uh, I greet everyone. Good morning, Nigeria. You have hit the matter on the, on the head. It is going on in the society and almost every community, almost every home is experiencing this issue of violence against women and girls. Take, for instance, the issue of the girls we are referring to now. They are from different homes. Only God knows what is responsible for that. And the, what is responsible for that is not far-fetched. A lot of things to be responsible for this. And that is why it is, it is important, it is highly essential that we talk about violence against women and girls in our community. Globally, violence against women and girls affects one in every three women in their lifetime. lifetime. And mostly one in three women experience this violence perpetrated on them by their intimate partner. And there is no doubt about the fact that uh, it is a human rights violation. The impact, the negative impact of uh, violence against women and girls is what we can see in those girls that we are referring to now. And there are a lot of underlying factors responsible for what we can see in those girls. A girl that is raised in the home that violence against women or, or, or intimate partner violence is the order of the day. What do we expect from this, from such a child? A home where a child cannot walk up to a mother and uh, express herself about what is troubling her, about uh, her experience. Of course, such a girl will take solace in, 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 in her friends, peer influence. They are all responsible for the moral decadence in our society. It is high time we discuss, we all sit and we all come together to discuss the issue of violence against women and girls. All right, of Elijah, course, it is I know, not just starting. I know, I know violence yeah. against women is one of the various factors people go through that might have this ripple effect in children. And I know that, that that's what our focus would be with the conversation with you. But we'll, we'll pack the issue of, um, of um, drug abuse for a moment because we still have to discuss it another day thoroughly. So we'll come to the issue of violence against, which is what our, our, our guest is prepared for. Now, we know the data of violence against women in the homes. What can, what can we do, not just as a, as a government, but as society, to help those who are in need of assistance in this issue? Because there are lots of women, and even men, that are undergoing violence in their homes. But they don't know where to go to. Is it it's something that you don't want to talk about? You don't want to share because you feel it's very private and mm. demeaning. So who can they talk to? Where can they go? Where can they seek help in this kind of situation? Thank you very much. And that is one of the reasons why we are here this morning. We understand the fact that violence is ravaging our society. And when it's a lot of women, they don't even know who to turn to. The fact that some of them are not even speaking out. But it is very, very important that we be the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece for those who cannot speak out. We should be the mouthpiece for those who cannot express themselves. A lot of agencies, we know the government alone cannot do it. That is why the civil society organization, the faith-based organization are being dragged into it. NASPAT is partnering with a lot of international organizations, and this time we are partnering with UNICEF on ending violence against women and girls. 
we have the request to sensitize our communities, our members, the public, on the issue of violence against women and girls. There are a lot of medium that, with which you can reach out to us. NAFAT is not doing it alone. We are partnering with a lot of other agencies that are in this field that are doing wonderfully well. We partner with Mirabe Center, with Chechenyara, and other agencies like that. But for you to reach out to NASPAT, you can walk up to a counseling committee, children affairs committee, in any of our branches. Or you can call our F-line, 0704-811-5092. I'll take that again. 0704-811-5092. Our imams, our spiritual leaders, have been sensitized on how to handle issues of uh, violence against women and girls. Whenever a, a, a case comes up like that, we require them, the ones that we know that we cannot handle at their salary level, we require them to their appropriate quarters where they can get the help that they need. A lot of women are really going through a lot. That is why mm. we have come on board this morning. That in, in, enough of suffering in silence. Mm. Reach out for the help. Help is out there. Go right. to uh, 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 any, 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 uh, any, any NASPAT Atalatu branch. And All right, thank you, you Elijah. So we're going to you. get the details for NASFAT on our uh, individual pages. And we'll try to share it because it's important. You're right. Lots of women are dying in silence. Yeah. Many of them are not speaking up because of society. And we'll do our best to support NASFAT in this to ensure that every woman who needs help can find help. Is it only restricted to Muslim women or Christian women who can call? NASFAT is serving humanity. Fantastic. It is not limited to only Muslims. The Muslims, the Christians, the, 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 the free thinkers, everybody is welcome. Fantastic. All right. Everybody, thank this is service to humanity. You just call the number and, and you get response. Fantastic. Thank you so much for, for sharing with us. We're going to go on a break. We'll just round up on the issue of, the, of drug abuse in a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So initially, we're discussing about uh, drug abuse about in young people. Our guest came prepared, prepared actually for violence against women, which is fine. So we had that conversation with her, but it's important that we round up our talk on that because it's not a conversation we can even finish today. We might mm. have to bring another day, another expert who's going to focus on drug abuse, um, the, uh, on how we can parents can manage it. Hmm. Because the truth is, it is there. It exists. Young people are taking this drug, whether we want to believe it or not. They would only, many of us wouldn't try to experiment growing up, but we had enough uh, will to say no. And the fear of your mother. And the fear. <laughs> so how do we instill that fear? What, do we, what kind of conversations do we have with young people to stop them from One engaging in One of the conversations this? my mom had with us was she took us to the front of the TV and then she showed us people who had taken drugs, mm. how their lives ended up, what happened to them, how they ended up in hospital. So that discourages you. When you see the results mm. of... As a I child. Think, of, when you as a child see the results of people who take drugs, you will caution yourself. Because peer pressure is... There is peer pressure. It's so real. You are, now, it's you, the parent, fighting peer pressure. So you have to now expose your child mm. to the effects mm -hmm. of drug abuse. Right. Don't... Lord it over. But, ah, can you, ah, if you take brown, I will kill you. I will... Don't. Why okay. In a nice way, talk to your child. Talk to your child so that the thing will enter. Mm. Bring out pictures. Bring out videos. Show them the effects of drug mm -hmm. abuse. I tell you, nine times out of ten, it will work. Mm. Why okay. this thing that you just said just made me realize that maybe in my the way my mom was bringing me up, it was not just random occurrences. Because I remember growing up many times where there were movies for drug abuse and um, plays at the University of Just for drug abuse. She would take us there. You know, I just thought it was a fun thing to do. But now that you're saying it, probably my mom was using it to, to deliberately teach me about drug abuse. Because, you know, everybody makes fun of me here. They say, hey, NGLA story is out. I'm so afraid of drug abuse. I feel it's worse than death. 
Mm. And the reason I feel that is that you see a young, promising individual who's unable to do anything because of their addictions. Mm. And is, for me, it's the saddest thing to see, that you have this potential. Prospects. You could be many things, but you cannot yeah. just because of your addiction. So, and it's important that we teach children. And for me, I remember from primary school, we used to have people who would come and do all sorts of plays for us. Mm. The movies I've watched from when I was a child concerning drug abuse is still very mm. clear in mm. my mind to tomorrow. I mean, and I, I think I, that's I, what I we have need this call to do. Emunike. I'll, I'll, I'll share my own story. Emunike, are you there? Sorry. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, this, uh, this is my first time on this show. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. Um, contributing to the topic you are discussing this morning, uh, let me just try the instance of when I was really young. There was a... Uh, should I use should I use it? Should I use the instance of instance of uh, the launch of uh, of this American artist, whereby we watch them move and the rest of it. Then dream my own self. We have fearless. We have uh, some of uh, some of our colleagues who did the first name. And then the issue of what you're telling me. Oh, I mean, okay, I really wanted to hear that story. You see, the truth, what, what I would like us to also tell each other is that we've all been young before. Mm. Some of you had this perfect, normal childhood, you know, mommy, daddy, everybody's perfect. Some of us had experiments. I mean, I was, I was a young child where I experimented because I grew up seeing... There's a, there, I know I have two families. My own mother's family was very, very normal. <laughs> the other side of my family was very, very explore. They like to explore. Mm. So from that side of the family, I saw people smoke. It was normal. It was a cool thing to smoke. So when I finally gave my freedom, I went to the U.S. I had nobody, no mommy, no dad, nobody. just me. Myself and my sibling then, both of us sat down together. We started experimenting. We got a pack of cigarettes and we tried to experiment it. Of course, as a young child, you think, ah, this is cool. But there was some way in me that reminded me, hey, Maria, this is, this is no... <laughs> I had that picture too, where I was taught the dark, how the darkened lungs. Yes. I saw that picture mm -hmm. as a child. So when I was doing it, I said, hey, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was able to tell myself, no. It happens too with alcohol. And yeah. there's a phase in your life, a child, you take alcohol. Mm -hmm. I did it. There's the time my swing on campus, you only see Corona Extra in my fridge. That was, that was the phase. But I was able to snap myself out of it. Say, Mariah, okay, now, no more. Behave no more. This is, you, can't, you can't continue doing this. So it's, how, it's, it's not to tell a child not to because they will or they might. Mm. It's how to help them with the will to say, stop, no, I can't go further. That's the real issue because if we assume it's not there, no, you must never. You are joking. Because they might try, they might experiment. That's life. So it's, it's not even so about perfect parenting. Communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. communication is key. I keep saying this, uh, this is key. <laughs> communication, <laughs> is key. communication is key. Yeah. If you can communicate with your child, mm. the, how bad mm. drugs can be, even if he or she tries it, mm. that thing yes. that you, that you, you instilled in, me, in his DNA. But yeah, quite, talk so I, I'll just say that, that we were blessed to have parents who had intentionality in raising us, mm. and that was a good one. But there are a large, um, like, like a large number of people whose parents, the public schools, whose parents don't have the time to give that knowledge. There must be a process where the government and the Ministry of Education will take on this responsibility of filling in the gaps. Mm. Like you said, what, those um, plays you watched, I watched them. It wasn't based on, it was NGOs, private organizations that came to schools, went on tour of schools, universities, mm. and did this education. Then even school policies themselves had a day where they say no to drugs and they say we as um, drama units of the school would have to organize something to educate. We need to go back to that place where we as a government create this knowledge and impute it into these children who don't have parents who have the time mm. to give them the knowledge. Mm. And we cannot remove drug abuse from economical instability because mm. the more people Terrorism. are economically unstable, right. they will resort to things to ameliorate the crisis they Absolutely. feel that is happening in their Let lives. Let me take this call from Ruki. Are you there? You're alive. Go ahead, please. Okay. So, I think it's part of the group. Ah. We can't hear you, Ruki. It's a bit... Oh, okay. uh, I think we're having issues with our phone lines. Mm. Um, is there something that I thought I was want crucial? To take this Go ahead, please, okay. Um It says, Dear ladies, these girls, it's from Party for Real. Dear ladies, these girls are in somebody's house. 
Shisha is not something anybody can just buy. Mm. This person is yeah. their abuser. Yeah. And he or she needs to be identified and brought to book. I okay. totally I agree, agree with this. Because well. I saw the video. They are not in school. Mm -hmm. They are in somebody's house. Somebody posted it. Even maybe this is the person whose house they are in. Posted it as... Yeah. Um, Okay, unfortunately, we have to wrap up on this. I can't, okay. We can't continue this, but this is a conversation we'd like to continue to have, and hopefully we can bring it back, because the truth is that we've not even scratched the surface of this. There's so much to discuss on the issue of drug abuse um, with young, young children. Let's go on a break. We have to move on to our Let's Talk segment. When we come back, we continue the conversation we started yesterday with David Houdain. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we'll continue our conversation yesterday on the allegations and counter allegations concerning the past comments, uh, the ministrations of the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Sheikh Ali Issa Pantami. Now, join us on the show as yesterday is Mr. David Houdain, one of the other leaders who started the hashtag Pantami Resign Now. Welcome, David, to the show. Thank you for having me. Yes, good to have you. So, yesterday on the show, you made some really startling revelations, one of which was the fact that um, the official broadcast um, station for the Ministry of, uh, of Communication and Digital Economy was an Islamic station, which you said on the show yesterday. And that, that many of us found that a, a, a bit troubling. Um, in addition to that, you also said that um, the, his actions have shown that he might be an extremist and um, yet to be de-radicalized. Now, these are strong allegations. Many who have watched these videos and they're still trying to understand exactly where these allegations are coming from exactly. What did you hear? What did you see? Because some of us have seen the videos and saying, ah, what? This man has expressed an opinion. He doesn't, he doesn't come across as a radical or an extremist. But what information do you have that we don't have that you might have seen to make us understand that indeed this man might be a radical? So um, it's, there isn't really any information that I have which isn't already out in the public domain. Um, I'd, I'd implore people to go read uh, the, the two uh, news articles that I've penned on the subject. The first was on Sahara Reporters and the second was on Newswire NGR. Um, if, you, if you read those two articles and then you come away afterwards feeling as if there's still something about this issue that you don't know, then I really can't help because a lot of work went into researching those articles and putting forward all the available information. Everything is in there. So um, what what did I see that made me reach this, this conclusion? Well, what I saw is the same thing everybody else has seen. The videos and the audios and the translations are in the public domain. Everything is in public circulation. And by the way, Isa Pantami himself has already confirmed that he did express these opinions. And as I said on the show yesterday, he then tried to disingenuously uh, hint that, you know, probably this, you know, these things happened when he was a teenager or something. And as, as I also said on the show yesterday, uh, the speech in question, the main speech, because there were several, but the main speech in question, which was delivered in 2006, was delivered when he was 33 years and 11 months old. So that, that doesn't come into it. Um, in addition, since, since yesterday, uh, since I was on the show, there has been a further development, which has further underlined the, the fact that Isa Pantami is who he is and he's not going to change for anybody. So um, a, a, a civil society organization led by uh, Deja De Andrew uh, penned a letter to, uh, to uh, Western governments basically saying that we have someone in the federal cabinet in Nigeria who we think uh, has ties to terror organizations and who is an Islamic extremist. And uh, basically uh, for purposes of of national security, both on our end and on yours, we don't think that this person should be allowed to travel freely. And we, we wish to officially register the fact that uh, the fact of our discomfort with this person. Now, um, a Facebook page that that, uh, that, that is dedicated to uh, pro uh, promoting Islam, you know, a Nigerian Facebook page, then 
uh, took up uh, Deji's photo, put a red X mark on it, and declared that Deji is an enemy of Islam. Right now, Issa Pantami himself, with his verified Facebook accounts, then proceeded to make a comment on the post in Hausa, and the comment translated to "May God curse his blessings." Hmm. Right. And then he probably didn't expect that this post was going to go viral, that people were going to see it because it was made in Hausa on, on an obscure Facebook page. And then it went viral. And within a few minutes of the post going viral, then conveniently, a new post appears on, on the same verified Facebook account saying, um, I was hacked and um, I've just got control of my account back. So please disregard anything that was posted before. And it's like, like, do you really not rate us that much? Like, is it really, like, do we really mean so little? Like, having our intelligence insulted in this manner is not something that I'm especially fond of. But this is where we are. Isa Pantami is who he is. He's not about to change. And I don't mean to, like, flog a bit for us. Okay, because okay, I, all right. I, I think we already addressed it. Let me, let me throw in a few more Sorry, questions for you. Go ahead. Yeah, so, David, um, I know you're assuming that many of us have seen all the materials that you have seen. For some of us, we've seen, we've seen a video and an audio. And um, from what I've heard and what I've seen, I do not see a man from those two, um, the video and the audio that I heard and I saw, it did not come across to me as a man who had extremist views. In fact, in that particular debate, he seemed to be educating someone on the importance of Western education for Muslim people. So I don't know if you could specifically give us, because not everyone has seen the Sahara reports and all that you're saying, just to educate us better. What exactly did you see? What were the words that, you, that were used. said? What were the words that were used to tell that ex this man is an extremist? So that we're not arguing from just hearsay. Do you understand? David, are you there? Okay. Ooh. All right, we're trying to reconnect with David. I hope he heard the question, though. All right, so as soon as we, I mean, what topic we want to go? Oh, well, I, I didn't get to watch the show yesterday, but I saw clips of it. And I, I, I think that, I believe that everybody is innocent until they are guilty. And everybody is, until they are proven guilty. And I believe that people should be allowed to, there should be no fear of, of, of um, any attack. If somebody is accused, the person should be allowed to be properly investigated, regardless of if they're in power or not. And uh, so... Okay, I'm told he's back. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. So, David, are you there? Hello, David. It should, it should be investigated. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Definitely. Yeah, hello. Okay, did you get Mariam's question my... before the break? Did you get Mariam's question? Yes, um, I, 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 I'm just the one you were saying, yes. Yeah. Did you get Mariam's question, though? Ask yes, you. I did. Okay, please go ahead. You can respond right now. So, um, I'm not sure what she meant by uh, she didn't see someone who, who gave off that, that kind of energy. Because the videos that I saw, which I think everybody else should have seen at this point, uh, they showcased Isa Pantami delivering a public lecture. This was in 2006. Completely unprovoked making statements to the effect of, uh, we pray for the day when the images on the, on the Naira notes will be taken off of those notes because they are forbidden by Islam. And we, all, we also especially pray for the day when the Gregorian calendar, the calendar of the infidels, calendar Arna, as he called it, will, will, will be abolished and be replaced with the Islamic calendar. Okay. Uh, he expressed deep support and admiration for Osama bin Laden, and for the Afghan Taliban. He said right. in his words, yeah, the, uh, the Afghan Taliban might, uh, the, sorry, uh, 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 Osama bin Laden might have made some mistakes, but I consider him to be a better Muslim than myself. Right. And then he said, um, the, the US, who is our, our adversary, the infidels, especially the US, which is our adversary, are always looking for how to tarnish the good image of the Taliban in the eyes of our Muslim men, wow. as in the eyes of Muslims. So I'm right. not sure which of these comments exactly. So, sorry, we uh, are you saying that Please that is a video? There's a video of that or audio? 
It's an audio file. It's an audio it's an recording, audio which he himself has confirmed. Well, okay, let me confirm, so to, let me confirm to you, David, that I haven't seen or heard of that video, and I don't think I that um, any that. of us have seen. So let's not just assume that everyone has seen that particular okay, one. So it's so good that you brought now that up. Now, let us go based well, on I that. Mean, all, all it really takes is a simple Google search. All the information is out there. So I don't think saying you individually haven't seen it is yeah, especially yeah, much of an excuse. It's that. out there. It's a Google search we make. Right, that, that's fine. But so what exactly would you want the government to do at this time? Many have called for his resignation. But do you think that will suffice? Because the truth is, there are many more Issa Pantamis from where that Issa Pantami came from. So um, do, how do you know that whoever is going to replace him is not going to be a radical or an extremist? How do we ensure, what, what do we do to ensure that this doesn't happen again if indeed he is a radical um, extremist? What, by, by him resigning, does that fix the problem? Him resigning doesn't necessarily fix the problem of having Islamic extremists at the topmost levels of Nigerian government. But what what it does fix it, is that it fixes the problem of having Issa and Tammy Islamic extremists in Nigeria's government. Because I, I, I think it's very important to separate these issues. Mm. Saying that Issa and Tammy must resign is a completely separate issue to saying that we have to make sure that he's not replaced with more of the same. Yeah. Obviously, we don't want him to be replaced with another person who is just a continuation of the same thing. But that's a conversation that we're going to have after he's removed from that office. Right now, the conversation should be, why is this person still in office? Okay. Somebody who has been uh, who uh, has been recorded saying these things and who himself has confirmed the veracity of these recordings. And then tried to uh, hint that, well, you know, this was a past life. Meanwhile, it wasn't really a past life. This was 2006, which wasn't that long ago. And as recently as, as, as yesterday, he was still out there making the usual incendiary comments and placing, uh, you know, a, a mark against somebody, you know, essentially endorsing a violent fatwa against a private citizen. The Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is out here doing that up until 24 hours ago. So why is this person still in office? And why are we even having the conversation about, oh, you know, if you replace him, it, you know, he could just end up being another person who's just like, well, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. Right? Right. Let's remove him first, okay. and then start having a conversation about who is going to replace his time. Right. Because I think it's important to separate these issues so that we don't confuse ourselves about this. Okay. There is an Islamic extremist sitting on the Federal Executive Council, on the Federal Cabinet. This should not be the case. Nigeria does not have a shortage of qualified people to sit in such positions. Point so taking. This time is not more important than the rest of us. Right. Go ahead, Waike. Yeah, David, there is a school of thought. And I, I'm not saying I belong to that school of thought that believes that uh, he could have changed, that uh, should you punish a person for what he did when he has now changed. Another school of thought believes that a leopard doesn't change its spots. Mm. What would you say? Sorry, um, I didn't really hear those, those two questions. Well, I, I think your voice was a bit distant. I, I said there's a school of thought that believes that uh, he has repented. So if he's repented, forgive him. There's another school of thought that believes that a leopard shouldn't change, uh, doesn't change his spots. Which school do you believe? Well, it, the, the, the answer to that conundrum is very simple. <laughs> up until yesterday, what was he doing? Hmm. Right, up until yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, you know, a, an Islamic Facebook page and a, a Facebook page with, you know, with some pretty extreme opinions, essentially placed a, you know, a, an X mark against a private citizen. Essentially put a hit out on a private citizen, and he endorsed it with wow. his verified official Facebook account. And then came to lie afterwards that he was hacked. So up until yesterday, Isa Patami is still doing the same violent extremist things he has always done. He has not changed in any way. So. You know, this, this, this idea that, oh, you know, this was a lifetime ago and my opinions have evolved since then, have changed since then. Right. You only have to even look at his educational history so that this, this, this guy is not being completely true. Right? All right, let, um, me, let me take a call out. Oh. I covered this with the... David, let me take this call out. Sorry, go been... ahead. Good morning, are you there? Right. I'm here. Go ahead, you're live, please. Yeah. You know, so, go ahead. I just wanted to... Yeah, I just wanted to contribute my quote out to this. Um, this thing that has been going on that Dr. Issa Ali Pantami. Yes, go ahead, would, sir. Um, resign. 
And, uh, you know, in my own view, I feel that any people that ask for a uh, resignation uh, are maybe playing some kind of religiosity or ethnicity. Um, if we look at it, um, Dr. Ali Palsani is among the few people that the minister today that got it on merit, he got that appointment on merit without any godfather or godfather regime or any influence from anybody. You understand? Somebody, he himself has said at the point he had a particular view, but he hasn't said what his view was. And I have not the view. And I don't think there's anything wrong. For all of us, there are, some, there are certain views that we have at some certain points. And today we have denounced them based on having more knowledge or um, maturity, like you say. You understand? Okay. So right. for people to be. Okay, go ahead, Tokwe. Okay. So um, I wanted to, I wanted to ask this question. The last call I a bit threw me off, but the question is, based on the level of research that you've done into the person of Dr. Isa Patami and your um, current hashtag, which is that he should resign, what are the legal processes that Nigerians can use to um, come against the character, if, if they find that the character of an individual serving in government does not sure. represent the country, what are the legal ways they can go about it? Because asking for maybe if he should resign might not happen by himself. What are the legal means by which we can tailor these reports through the government apparatus and get them to do an investigation and carry out action? Which, which, which is the right ministry to look to? And which one are you already pursuing? So uh, the, probably the most impactful way of going about that will be to bring in the National Assembly, that's the House of Representatives and the Senate. Now, uh, as we know, there are three uh, armed uh, branches of government. The executive, which is essentially the federal government, the judiciary, and the uh, legislative. Now, the judiciary, we're unlikely to get much help from them because, you know, due in part to our own uh, acquiescence, it has essentially been de facto. It's not really an independent judiciary anymore. Uh, so which leaves us with the legislature. Now, uh, people always make this comment that uh, it's, it's a rubber stamp, uh, Senate, and blah, 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 blah. And I always beg to disagree, because the truth is that given enough public pressure, regardless of whatever motivations the senators or the representatives to the National Assembly have, they will have to listen to their constituents. And if enough Nigerians put enough pressure on our representatives sitting in both houses to demand that Isa Pantami and or President she, uh, appears before them to give an account of the situation, then it will happen. Eventually, it has to happen, right? Even if the executive is determined to push through its own agenda and to disrespect the, the, uh, the principle of separation of powers, the, the Nigerian constitution still exists, right? And the executive can only disrespect it up to a, up to a point, mm. right? The, if the National Assembly receives enough pressure, it will have to issue a summary to the relevant parties to appear before it. And then if, if, if that doesn't happen, then you know, that becomes a political issue within both houses of assembly, that the executive is directly disobeying an order to appear before it uh, by the legislature, which the constitution gives the legislature power to do. Um, the the uh, you notice I didn't use the word president. I said presidency because I'm not especially convinced that the president himself is even even aware of the situation at all. I think the amount of information which is even allowed to get to him is heavily managed. So when I right. say presidency, I'm referring to the institution right. around the president, which includes the vice president, the attorney general, all, all the people who have a significant amount of power, the administration. These people must be compelled by the national assembly to at least speak on this issue. Because right. up till now, as, as me... we're talking, the, mm. the federal government is yet, is, is yet to issue even an official comment All on right, this issue, me, which is more me, than a week old. Let, let me take this call from... Out of let me take this call from Aki. Aki's been holding for a while. Aki, are you there? Mm. Aki, you're live. Go ahead, please. Uh-oh. Aki, are you there? Don't worry about you, Mark. Aki, you're live. Are you there? <laughs> I didn't hear it. Okay, he's out. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Mariam, go ahead, please. Yeah, so um, for me, anyone that 
I mean, present day and age, anybody that um, says publicly and openly that they have any um, admiration for the personality of Osama bin Laden, that person clearly um, should not be um, appointed into office where he's, I mean, in, in the Nigerian government, knowing where we stand concerning terrorism and also what Osama bin Laden um, represented. So my question now is, sometimes we wait on the uh, government to speak up or, as you said, the presidency to say something, but we have found that in some cases that never comes. In other climes, we see people do like uh, petitions and things like that. So for me, the question is for those of us now, for Nigerians now watching this and on ground, what are the things that an individual can start doing towards pushing for um, a response from the legislative arm of uh, the legislature or the executive and the judiciary? What can we start doing one on one right now from our desk in our homes watching TV? Uh, I'll refer to, to an example from 2019 to explain what, what we can do. Um, I think it was September or October 2019. Um, it was looking as if the so-called uh, social media bill was going to be pushed through after getting through second reading in the House. Um, people came together on social media. Someone created a tool that allowed Nigerians to send emails to their representatives at the touch of a of, of button, emails with a template body, right? And that was, that was a very effective campaign. I, I don't think in the history of, of Nigeria since 1999, there had ever been a time when senators and, and representatives were so bombarded by their constituents. Because we always have to remember that uh, people in Abuja, in the National Assembly, often think of themselves as, um, as rulers or as leaders, as against representatives, which is what they are. Right. So they are not really used to the idea of being held to something by their constituents, I mean, forced to take certain actions by their constituents. So when it does happen, it is very impactful, right? right. And it happened with the social media bill when they were so bombarded with thousands, if not tens of thousands of emails by their constituents. Then all of them came around and realized that, you know, we really cannot pass this bill. This bill is politically toxic for us. If we pass this bill, our constituents are going to vote us out. Our constituents are going to be angry with us. Can't go back to our village. We mm. pass the bill, right? So something similar needs to be done now. There needs to be a grassroots, if you like, guerrilla information campaign, right? right. Yeah, people need to start contacting their senators and their reps. The their phone numbers and their emails are on public record. Right? Right. So this information right. is not too, me, too difficult to access. Me, um, for those who are interested, I will be tweeting uh, several resources from which you can access such information from my Twitter handle at the right. day, later on in the day. So right. that's just one of the ways that uh, you can put pressure on your representatives to get right. them to take certain action. And I then mean, as well, obviously, there's a social media campaign which is ongoing and, you know. And then if perhaps most important, uh, people who, who, uh, who have these conversations offline, right, one-on-one, -on -one, people should resist the temptation to just let it be gist. Yeah. Right, just let it be office water cooler talk. People should consult the available resources, right? They're available in well-researched uh, uh, articles and information which are available in public domain. And use them to and use those and, and refer to these things when having All right, let me pause you for a second. One I thing I've noticed about these conversations in Nigeria is that. Let me pause you for a second, ahead. David. I have a call I've been holding for a while. Yakub, are you there? Thanks for calling. Good morning, Good morning. Go ahead, please. Sister, yeah, good morning. Then good morning, good morning to you all. Me yeah. and good morning. Morning. Uh, this is a very, very, very dangerous and uh, very de delicate information getting from your guest. You see, Morayo, if you say part of me, you should resign. I think before the man become a minister in this, in this country, the DSS have already done the diligence over him. How come the DSS? The security agency does not know this. And then Miriam has asked your guest a very valid question there, which uh, he does not provide answer to. We, we were Miriam says, how come he, she does not saw that video that she was, he was referring to? Even you, Morayo, you have never saw the video. I don't, I'm not sure that it's a any story. It's rather that someone saw the video. Even me speaking here, I did not saw the video. So... How come it is only them that are calling for his head or his resignation that for the video? And then the man was now replying to you that the information is on the social media. So, Mario, to me, if somebody says that somebody is extremism or something, so give us the, give us the valid evidence to show that it is really extremist person. 
So if you're not calling him that you should resign, and then Moraya, please do something for us. Talk me as a person. Because this very particular show is watched all over the world. Call him to the studio or put call to him. Let's, uh, let's hear from this whole part. So yeah. that we cannot be able to follow these people that he should resign or whatever. So, so that's it. Good morning. Right. God bless you. Thank you very much, Jago. So we are definitely in touch with... Um... The Honorable really? Minister, Mr. Pantami, he definitely will be with us in the, maybe tomorrow or so. We're not sure yet, but he would, we are in talks with him and he will be on the show shortly. But um, I'd like to go back to what Nigerians usually ask. When things like this happen, David, are you there? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. So Nigerians will always ask this basic question that why now? You know, this is a man that's been in the system since 2015. Um, he's been a minister and he's been, in, he's been a government official. And just like Alcala said, DSS could have done their due diligence before he was being, he's been brought on. So they will tell you, why, why are these people, these are mischief makers, as politicians call them, mischief makers. They want to bring in that because of the NIN issue. They, do, they don't want, the, they, they, they're against the general um, um, drive to get everybody registered on the NIS. So they're putting, call, calling people like David and others to come and push these issues to the, to the fore to be able to re get him to resign. What are your thoughts on how do you respond to these um, comments from those who believe that this is just some kind of a, a fraud to bring down Issa Pantami? Well, hmm. that, that school of thought is, is a very asinine opinion to hold for two very simple reasons. The first reason is that if uh, somebody has links to terrorism and this person has been in government since 2015, and this has just uh, entered the new cycle in 2021, so do you then say, well, because, because the DSS didn't do anything about it in 2015 or in 2019, so therefore there's some sort of statute of, of, of limitations. So. He can't be, be, be tried for what happened in the past or something. We, we can't make reference to it anymore. The, the Ojura has cancelled or something. Is that what we're saying? That doesn't make any sense. Mm. Whether it happened in, in, if he's been in government since 2000 and, and this just came into the public domain in 2021, it makes no difference. It still happened and it still needs to be addressed. He's still an unsuitable person for being in government. Secondly, and more importantly, with regard to the NIN issue, this comes to the heart of the matter of why there is so much concern about somebody like this being in, in such a sensitive position. Now, as, we, as I'm sure we well know, the NIA used to be uh, the, respond, the, military, the ministry that was coordinating the, the NIA projects used to be the Ministry of Interior under Raul Areguishola. Now, when Batami came in, he actually lobbied very hard to get this, uh, that project transferred to his ministry, which is the Ministry of Communication. And the NIA project is not new. It has been existing for years in Nigeria, right? And then this guy came in, and all of a sudden, it became like, almost like a sole policy focus that by hook or by crook, Nigerians must register for the NIA. If you don't register for the NIA, you're going to lose your mobile phone service, which I thought was an absolutely crazy thing to do. Because to the best of my knowledge, Nigeria is the only uh, democratic country on earth right. which, has such, and which has such a policy right. leaning that without uh, connecting your mobile phone to some sort of national identity project, then you are not going to have mobile phone service. It does, this idea doesn't exist anywhere else in the democratic world. Nigeria is the only place. And uh, first of all, the, the data being captured by the NIA, right, is essentially duplicated data that is, that is already available in five other places. So if you have a driver's license, if you have a permanent voter's card, if you have a phone, a, a, a registered SIM card, if you have a BVN, and if you have an international passport, the data that you capture when you are getting all these things done is the exact same data which is captured by the NIA. So you essentially have six copies of your full bio data and biometric data as a Nigerian stored in six different databases, which, by the way, contravenes the NDPR, the provisions of the NDPR, which basically seeks to create a set of standards for, uh, for the management of data of Nigerian citizens the data that's collected both by private and public entities. So um, why are we trying to create six different copies of the same data in the first place? There was a story that came out in February where something like 20 million, uh, the, the data sets of about 20 million Nigerians was leaked online. It's available for free online. It's on the dark web, but it literally, if you Google it, it's two, or, it's two or three clicks away. Millions of Nigerians have had their data exposed because this data is not being stored in a secure manner. It's being stored in plain text format on unsecured servant, right? So we already have a huge data security problem in Nigeria, 
right? And now you want to duplicate the existing data even further. To what end? Why? Why is Isap, why is Isap and Tami so interested in this NIM project? What does this have to gain? So, can I, uh, all right, let me pause what exactly? you. Let me yeah. pause you, David. Let me pause you yeah. for a second. I have an Anita been holding from Joss, and I'll come to you. Anita, are you there? Yeah. Anita, you're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Anita. Good morning, Anita. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Anita. Um, I believe that that um, demand should be should be investigated. Yes. Thank you. It should be investigated. Demand should be investigated. Because, first of all, he has come out to say that um, what he did then was because he was young, actually. But if, if he has said that, then he should be investigated. Yes, he, he, he said he did that as a result of youthful ex, exotic, exotic exuberance. Thank you, Anita. I'm sorry for the... For the <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the... Yeah, why yeah, just one, okay. um, Do you fear any reprisal attacks? David? Sorry, was that question directed at me? Yeah, yes. it was. <laughs> uh, you would have to explain what you mean by reprisal attacks. Like the, the one that they put um, a photo out of his head yesterday. Fatwa. Fatwa. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, are you all, don't you think the same thing can happen to you? Oh, well, it could. Um, I don't see why it would, because I haven't, um, I haven't come at this from a, from a strictly political angle. I'm a journalist, right? It's my job to bring stuff out into the public domain. Stuff which is hidden. So I'm literally just doing my job, right? Okay. And if even if it were to happen, well, first of all, I'm not physically located in Nigeria, which helps. And secondly, well, you know, <laughs> I'm not. The truth is that as uh, as fatalistic as as this will sound, we're all going to die one, right? So I mean, I haven't lived an especially long life. I'm 31, but. I think I've seen enough of life to know that if you go through life constantly trying uh, to avoid offending people and trying to be middle of the road and middle towards them, you're going to live, you know, you might still die anyway. You might still die young anyway. There's no guarantee. And even if you live long, well, you're going to wake up, you know, when you're 60 one day and realize that you haven't had a life. So right. those things don't really phase me. It's, okay. If it's okay. going to happen, right. it's going to happen. Whatever. Me, yeah. Okay, so David, you, you... We have very little time, David. Yeah. I need to throw him. So, David, in, just before this question, you were talking about um, allegation. You were alleging that um, the NIN may have a sinister or, you know, a, a, a motive different from what we have been told. And many Nigerians mm -hmm. have already... Um, sort of registered for. So that would also bring the question, like people are asking, didn't DSS do the job? And this um, NIN was also discussed in the House. You know, we had um, other people come here, um, spokespeople for the government that came to our show to explain to us why we need the NIN and how it will help us in the fight against terrorism. Now hearing from you, alleging that they, that may not be the case, given the videos that you have watched. So now, when we, when people gather together now and put and follow the um, resign now and come out in their numbers and send those emails as you have suggested, and then we have a sit down because that's where I always have a problem in Nigeria. When we now have the panel, we sit down and they ask for hard evidence. What? Who do? Where do we go for the hard evidence? Who do we go? Because some people are called. They will say social media is is just social media. Where is the real life evidence that we can hold? So that something that you start as this, as powerful as this, as um, sensitive as this, I mean, does not just get thrown out because of lack of evidence, because we always hear that. Hello, David. David. <laughs> Anytime Maya has a question, it just freezes. Okay. <laughs> Maya, we are the one that freezes our technical. <laughs> All right, so I, I, was, I, I was a bit worried. David, did you get, oh, he's back. David, did you get that from Mariam? Sorry, say again. Did you get the question from Mariam? Yeah, she was asking. Uh, sorry, Hard uh, evidence. What? Uh, yeah, when we finally evidence, get. What, what will we tell them? She's sorry. worried about the social media trials we have. People yes. coming out and saying right. all this. And when, when, it's so when we finally media. get to the bottom of it, when we are sitting down at a panel, you know, it happens almost mm. all the time. We get to the panel, you're sitting there, and then no nothing. Evidence. 
and then it's usually just allegations or things like that. So, so but in this case, it isn't allegations. I've lost count of the number of times I've said this on this show already. There is a <laughs> sure fight of evidence. I am very good at my job, and I have done my job. So literally, probably after the show, I, I'd recommend that you sit down, maybe for 15, 20 minutes, and read through both articles. There is, so th this isn't allegations being thrown around, right? This is documented stuff, which he himself has confirmed its veracity. And, you know, the, the in fact, a, 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 an, an academic who specializes in Islamic studies, her name is Dr. Andrea Brigaglia, she works at the University of Cape Town Center for Contemporary Islam. She wrote a whole paper, a whole academic paper, uh, paper in 2019 called uh, Debating Boko Haram. That paper made extensive reference to Isa Pantami. It included a translation of the speech that I referenced, Suwai Yan Taliban. It included some of his other pronouncements he has made over the years. And it included the adversarial relationship he had with uh, Muhammad Yusuf, founder of Boko Haram. It, there's a lot of information there. So if you just go to Google and type um, Debating Boko Haram, by Andrea Brigaglia. You see that it's, it's a research paper, it's a peer reviewed research paper, right? And that's right. separate from the material I was able to dig up. David, I have to like run. People's Gazette, able I have to dig to up. Me. So there's a show fight of evidence. Let me, let me take a few tweets before I run. So we're not talking about evidence now. There right. is evidence. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Let me take a few tweets before we run off. Yes, so Mr. Debayo says, We run a party party government that's not responsive to our patriotic criticism. The government acts as if they are above the law, hence, their inaction should be responsible and act accordingly on issues. Things will not change if we fail to root out injustice. Um, Ken... so, Dutton, sorry, okay. Femi says the power minister of a particular country resigned because there was a power outage for three days. Irrespective of the size of the allegation and the strength of evidence, resignation is weird to us in Nigeria. Elsewhere, mm. Pantame will be tried in court. Um, Eureka says in the same country, Dr. Pantame would have resigned from office, from public office, until he is cleared of any allegation of being a terrorist sympathizer, but this is Nigeria. All right, we have and to run. David, let me, let me just give you this final few more seconds that we have. What's your greatest right. fear for this country? What's that thing? As a journalist who has information, you've seen a lot, you've read a lot. What's your greatest fear in view of this information that is out there concerning Pantami? My greatest fear for Nigeria is that uh, eventually, if this, uh, this uh, status quo of having conflicting interest groups running mm. different states within the states, mm. you know, all without the knowledge of the generality of Nigerians or oblivious to what is happening, then the experience of Somalia in the 1980s could be a real possibility. If you look at what happened in Somalia, it, it's almost a mirror uh, image of this. There were conflicting interest groups, some with, uh, with religious uh, uh, bents, some with ethnic bents, all competing within the administration of Siad Barre. And eventually the entire, the government collapsed and the, the country became a stateless country, a country without a state. Mm -hmm. And up until now, which is more than three decades later, yeah, the country is yet to, to regain any, any form of stability. So my biggest fear for Nigeria is that 200 million people will become displaced, which hmm. will become the world, by far the world's biggest ever humanitarian crisis. Nobody wants to see that. Thank you very much, David, for sharing your thoughts this morning. Mm. And as we said, we're following this story. We'll try to get the yes, minister, minister. Isa Pantami, to the show to hear his own side of the story. Stay with us. We'll be right back tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>